Hi everybody and thanks for joining me. In this video we're going to talk about one of the assignment types that you can use in Google Classroom which is create question. Now prior to the use of this tool if you wanted to do a discussion question in Google Classroom it was a little bit difficult because there was really no way to do it. Uh, one of the workarounds was to use a Google Sheet and create some spots where students could discuss and reply to each other. But the addition of this tool has made life a little bit easier for teachers. So let me show you what this looks like. I'm going to go into one of my classes. Anytime you want to add an assignment to Google Classroom, you just go to the bottom right and click on the plus sign. And then you have one of four options, which is create announcement, create assignment, create question, and reuse post. For create question, if I click, you'll see that it gives me a spot where I can add a question. And don't forget, anytime you're adding an assignment to a class, you can also add that assignment to multiple classes at the same time without having to type them over and over and over again. So I'll do that. And for this question, I'm going to ask a poll question. What is your favorite Google tool? And you can provide instructions if you'd like and you can also provide a due date or uh, if you choose a date you can also choose a scheduled time for that to uh, be due um, and then one thing that you'll want to do is if you're going to do discussion questions quite a bit or maybe they're journal questions you'll want to add a topic in this case um, I'm going to create one called journal and I'm going to make this a multiple choice question so I'll add some options on here Okay, so now we've got some options. And if you scroll down to the bottom, uh, don't forget you can add attachments uh, from your computer or drive, or you can add a video from YouTube or a link. In this case, I don't need to do that. Uh, so I can click ask, or I can schedule this to appear later. Scheduling a post for later is always a good thing because if you have multiple class periods and you don't want students who would normally meet with you later in the day answering that question before they come to class, you can schedule it to show up at different times. Now, I'll go ahead and click Ask, and our question will appear in our stream on Google Classroom, and it's ready for students to answer. So now that our question is in the stream, I'm going to click on the title of the question, and it takes me to the teacher view, and I can see the responses here before any answers ever come in. Yet, as students answer, I'll also be able to see their responses in real time, which is kind of nice because you can put it up on the front of the screen in the front of the classroom and students can watch responses um, as they come in. So let's take a look and see what that looks like. So I've got a couple of student accounts so I'm going to go ahead and vote and when I hit submit um, you'll see that their answers will appear on the screen in real time. I've just submitted one, I'm going to submit another and you can see their answers popping up which is kind of entertaining for the students and it, it kind of gives you some instant gratification as they're answering it on the screen. So that is a multiple choice question type. Let's take a look at the other one. And the other type that we can do is a short answer. Now short answer questions are a little bit different. Obviously you won't have the bar chart that you can view in real time, but you can really create a nice discussion uh, with your kids if you use the short answer type. I'm going to go ahead and throw a question up here really quick. And so I've got my question, but um, what I want in this case is, since this is a short answer question, I want students to be able to reply to each other. And anytime I do discussion online, what I usually tell students is that they need to respond to the post and then they need to read the responses of at least two other students and reply to their post with a meaningful statement or question. And that will generate some online discussion. And because you've stated it as a meaningful response, you'll, you'll get a lot better answers than you would normally get as opposed to just saying reply to each other. Because if you do that, you'll often get things like great answer or really cool. But if you ask them to do it with meaning, they'll put a little bit more thought into it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put those instructions out there. And so I've got my instructions. I'm going to go ahead and add a due date. And I'll go ahead and I'll make this a topic under journal. And so we're ready to go. It's marked as short answer. It's important that you have students can reply to each other turned on. 
And you may also want to set it up so that students can edit their answer. If they make a mistake, they can go back and change it. And so we'll turn that switch on and then we'll click Ask. And it shows up in the stream. And let me show you what this looks like to the student who's observing this class. And of course, you can see at the top of their screen, it says stream was updated. So we'll click show so they can see the new question. And here we have uh, the question and they've got a spot where they can type their answer. And um, then you'll notice this right here. It has this little I and that's telling the student that classmates will see their answer. So that's important for them to note um, that whatever they type here, everyone's going to be able to see. And you may want to uh, institute some classroom rules as far as what is appropriate for online discussion and what's appropriate for posting in the classroom. And of course, once the students type their answer, they'll click Submit. So let me go ahead and put something in this field. So I've got a response. I'll click Submit. And we've also got now that they've posted their response, an Edit button. And we've got a spot where they can see classmates' answers. And right now it says there's zero replies. So we'll, we'll go ahead and we're going to log into a different account so that we can see what it's like to respond to someone else. So here is a different account. Go into the classroom and I can see that uh, for this question, it's waiting for me to reply. And even though someone else has already posted an answer, it's waiting for me to submit my response first before I can reply to others. So I'm going to throw an answer on here and click Submit. And now as a student, I can see that the classmates' answers are waiting for me. I click on See Classmate Answers. And I can see that Barry has already posted an answer. I'll click Reply. And it gives me a space where I can post my response. And then after that response is in there, I'll click Post. And so now the other student will be able to see my reply to their answer. And so this, this just generates a nice way to create a threaded discussion. You can see all of your students' answers. Let me go back to my teacher account. There's the teacher account. And I can see that two are done and we have 10 that are not done. And I'm still waiting for those to come in. Let's take a look at what the teacher sees for a short answer question. And you can see here I have a place where I can assign points to the question. If I change those points, I can update the entire roster there. and. This allows me to go through and I can see what Barry posted and then if I click on the reply, I can see what Clark said in response to that and take those things into consideration before I give either one of these gentlemen a grade. So, well that is the create question assignment in Google Classroom. Hopefully that gives you some insight in, into ways that you can use this in the classroom and check out some of our other videos available for Google Classroom and if you have questions, always go back to my site at www.techiecoach.com and if you have questions let me know. Thanks for joining me.